So the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 is one of my favorite laptops for on-the-go creative professionals. Now, last year's version, just the straight Book Pro 360 before they added the old 2, took the i7-1165G7 and gave it its top performance out of any other laptop I saw on my channel using that exact same CPU. And so far this year, it's the same story. The i7-1260P in this laptop performs better than other laptops containing the i7-1260P, meaning that Samsung really works well with Intel for optimizing this laptop for their Intel Evo platform. This badge actually means something, and it should be noted that Samsung takes it seriously by the performance of this laptop. And we're gonna get into those benchmarks in just a minute. But first and foremost, I wanted to give that positive disclaimer that if you're considering the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360, you're considering a very good choice for photography, on-the-go video editing, design, and digital art. Now, let's jump into the build quality and usability of this laptop, cover some of those details, and then jump into the performance section. This is a two-in-one laptop, and the model that I'm testing does come with a pen. If anybody's curious about my thoughts on the pen touch sensitivity, definitely comment below, and I'll consider making a video on that in the future. Now, this does have a webcam as well as downward facing speakers. And here's a quick audio sample of me using the webcam and the speakers as well so you can hear what both of those sound like. This is the webcam on this Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 and of course a little sample of the microphone for you. Now the build quality on this is great. It's an aluminum chassis. It is so thin and light. That's one of my favorite things about this laptop is it's so thin, so light, has solid battery life and great performance. Now for ports, this thing does not have a lot of ports. Probably one of my complaints on this laptop is it's just got two USB type C's on the left side panel, one on the right side panel, and then a micro SD card reader. I kind of wish they would have given us maybe just a USB type A or an SD card reader instead of that micro card reader. It just isn't as useful for me as an on-the-go creator. If I'm a photographer or video editor or videographer, I'm most likely gonna be using SD cards, not micro SD cards. So that's a little annoyance to me. But other than that, those USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports are very fast for transfer speeds. <clears throat> now doing a classic tap test on this laptop, You can hear that it's very well put together. It's got a great build quality and an even better aesthetic. And that build quality is great, so that the aesthetic is better is quite impressive. Now you can easily open and close the laptop with one hand. And as we get into the interior of the laptop, this is one of the few ultra books that actually comes with a full size numpad on the right side. I personally am not a big numpad user. However, if you are, it's super convenient to have that. And this massive glass trackpad, which is set so nicely into the chassis. There's no rattly looseness that you experience when you're tapping on it. It has a little bit of a louder click to it, uh, but still very satisfying, very, very comfortable to use. The keyboard has a short to medium key press, kind of reminiscent of a scissor switch keyboard if you've ever used, say, a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro with that better keyboard. Not that horrible butterfly switch keyboard. We're not even gonna talk about that, but it's very similar to that short to medium key travel. Very pleasant, very comfortable under my fingers. What I love about this laptop is you can quickly change performance modes by just holding function and clicking the performance button function key on top of the keyboard deck there quickly jump through all the different performance modes. These actually are very effective. I'll show you later in the video that they do actually make a difference when choosing between settings while in Photoshop. Now here's a quick audio sample of me using the keyboard and trackpad so you can hear what that sounds like. Now, as we're jumping into the benchmark results, know that this does come with the i7-1260P, 16 gigs of RAM, and the model I have has a one terabyte SSD. Now, there's no dedicated GPU in this laptop, but you're not exactly gonna need that for 4K video editing because of that new i7-1260P. It is such a great CPU and optimized so well in the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360. Now, first and foremost, we'll kick it off in the simulated benchmarks, which are never an enjoyable thing for me. They don't really ever tell me all that much about what to expect as a creative professional. I'd rather jump into the real world test, which we'll do here in just a moment.
Now that we've covered the simulated benchmarks, let's get into the real world test. As you can see in Photoshop, this laptop scores an 803, which is the highest score from a 1260p laptop that I've reviewed so far on my channel. So again, very well optimized between Samsung and Intel with this CPU fantastic performance results for an on-the-go thin and light laptop. Now, as we go to the different performance modes, you can see that there is a wide variety of scores that we have here, which is a good thing. That means the performance modes are actually controlling the CPU the way that we would hope. On battery only and on optimization mode, you're getting about a 383, which is still a good score for an on-the-go battery result for Photoshop. So you're gonna be able to use Photoshop, get good performance. However, you wouldn't get as good a performance as going into high performance mode and having the computer plugged into the charger. Silent mode still performs great. Zero decibels at a 443. Quiet mode is really good at a 38 decibel. That's a really quiet, just above ambient room noise at a 653. And then as you move into optimized mode and high performance mode, you're gonna be where you can really start to hear the fan, but it's not blaring and it's not a loud fan noise, but you're getting fantastic scores out of this laptop for Photoshop. Now moving on to video editing, this is an area that I was really impressed with this laptop. Even in DaVinci Resolve, if you're editing 1080p, you're only gonna have about a five minute export time. Now, if you decide to do 4K in DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna have a longer export time at about 16 minutes. That's a little longer than I would personally like to see, but being that this is a mobile processor inside of a thin and light laptop, that's still quite good. And you'll have little to no drop frames inside of DaVinci Resolve for 4K. Now, as we move on to Premiere Pro, this is where I was really excited. In the past, laptops with mobile processors have not been known to be able to play back full quality 4K. They struggled and struggled and struggled for many years. I never recommended laptops without a dedicated GPU for 4K video editing until these new i7 1260Ps have come along. Now you can run full quality 4K footage on your timeline in Premiere Pro and only have 239 drop frames out of 16,177 in the project. That is as good as a H series processor, a high performance processor with a dedicated GPU about three years ago. That's insane how much performance increase we've seen over the past three years. Very excited about that. So that you can get this much performance and great battery life, which we'll show in just a minute, is incredible. Now the export times are good. As you can see on battery only and optimized mode, it's about four minutes and 58 seconds. That's fantastic. Uh, one way I would not run this laptop is on silent mode. It's about 21 minutes to export that 4K clip. Uh, but anything above quiet mode is gonna be great, you know. At your best, you'll be exporting at high performance mode at four minutes and 37 seconds. So great export times, solid playback. This would be a great choice for 4K video editing. Now, just for fun, I tested out some B-RAW. I did 6K playback at half quality and actually only dropped 300 frames, which was quite shocking to me. But as soon as I went up to full quality, it just started dropping frames like crazy. But that this thing can even play back 6K footage at half quality is stellar. Now the export time would have been like 45 minutes to an hour. So I would not recommend using this for 6K B-RAW editing. But let's say you wanted to preview a shot that you did, you're out on the, you know, you're out on location, you plug in your drive, you're like, hey, let's see how that turned out. You could preview the file and it wouldn't have any big issues there. So very awesome. Like I said, I'm blown away by this thin and light laptop that has great performance. Now let's talk about the battery life because that's gonna be the biggest benefit of choosing a thin and light laptop with a low TDP. So what you're gonna see is around 10 to 13 hours for a good battery life for productivity. And this laptop hits the 12 hour mark. It's 11 hours and 58 minutes for productivity. For the streaming battery life, it's almost 10 hours at nine hours and 47 minutes. And then for Photoshop, you're hitting about the five hour and 30 minute mark. And then for editing 4K footage in Premiere Pro, you're hitting the three hour and 43 minute mark. So great battery life out of this laptop. I would not say it's the best battery life I've ever tested, just to be honest with y'all, but it is still a very good battery life, especially for the performance that this laptop packs. Again, one of my favorite laptops of the year so far for the Ultrabook category. Last year, it definitely got my top pick as far as great battery life and great performance. They just have very, very, very much optimized the Intel CPU inside of the Samsung 
ecosystem. So just, I gotta say, great work to Samsung. And if you pick this laptop, you'd be making a good choice. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase. Likes that this video has brought you some value. And if you wanna see this laptop compared to some other ones, I've linked up some videos here. Otherwise, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.